Okay, well, welcome everyone. So it's 6.30 and uh, we'll get started. I think there may be a few more rolling in as we uh, get underway here. Yeah. So uh, um, let's have a look. Today, I may change up the, the agenda a little bit given today's market action, but we'll try and get through as much of this as we can. And then for, is there anybody that's new here for the first time today, tonight? Okay, if not, that's fine. So let's start with review attendee buys and sells. If you want to put your um, items into the uh, chat, and then we'll look at them. So let's go to the buys first. So if you, if, if many buys since we last met, so it's four, about four or five weeks ago, put those in the chat and we'll take a look at those and then we'll move on to the cells if there were any cells the last four weeks. Okay, so not seeing anything in the chat box. So I'm assuming that uh, there were no buys and there were no sells, which is fine. Um, all right, so let's go on. Let's skip breakouts and let's skip momentum stocks for now. We'll look back on those. Um, let's start with the... IPOs, I think. We haven't looked at IPOs for a while. So maybe we'll start with that and then we can uh, roll forward. So under cancelling, in particular, IPOs play a pretty strong part in your selections. And you always want to keep an eye on these. Okay, in no particular order, <clears throat> we'll go through... Um, so these are all IPOs that have popped up in in the last uh, last year. Okay, so we'll just kind of run through these, and then we'll see if there's any that are worth taking a look at. Because um, some of these may be setting up, may be extended, and some maybe just nowhere for now. So we can see, and I won't do an in depth analysis because there's, there's actually quite a few. So let's just roll forward. So this one obviously broken out. This one also broke out a while back and it's gone up. It's got a nice follow through. This one's kind of pulling back. This one's had quite a quite a run. So IPO'd, sold off that first week and then after that it's just been on the tear. There's just been no entry on this. This one not, not doing too good. This, there's another one that's broken out. Just a, a word about IPOs, and especially if they're in biotechs. Biotechs tend to be very volatile just because of all of the news, and they can move given um, FDA approvals and all that stuff. Auto parts. So here's one that's within a shot of its IPO high. BTMX, FIHL, SVV, Kodiak, gas. And one thing we're going to notice is that gas and energy in particular is all kind of showing some strength now. So this one broke out around the 19 and it's up already about 50% moved to the upside. So you can see how these, how this is about tech, can move very fast, right? So if you're looking for a rapid momentum, look at IPOs, 
is one area that you can focus in on. So Kava, this came out with some hoopla, this sort of kind of restaurant chain, and then it sold off, stabilized, and started to take off. So now that it's taken out the prior high here, it's actually moving up. It's got quite a down day. Uh, this is the weekly bar. <clears throat> pretty big weekly bar to the downside because of today's action. It's another one that's off to the races. So this one, interesting, this was um, in the uh, Simcom best performing stock pick. I think that was the prior week. And we can see breakout around 25.38. And the stock is now up almost 30% already. Tidal Trust. So a number of these are showing some considerable strength. And you want to keep an eye on these because I mean, if you just think about it logically, new merchandise coming to the market, new breakouts, that's a fertile ground to uh, for stock picking. If, if you're trying to play any type of momentum strategy. So there's another one just straight, straight up. So here's one that's actually in a base. Um, so we've got the eye here. And then we see it coming back in and you can see it's rounding out the bottom of that piece quite nicely. If it wasn't for today's action, it would have been looking a little bit better, but it's definitely one you can work with, right? CAPT. So I'll pull back. There's another one that's in a base. And the only caveat with this is I wouldn't regard this as a momentum stock. It's a, a REIT. But it's still a good setup. That's in a consolidation. And this one is also, let's see how deep this is. It's about 22%, so that's okay. You know, we, we allow for, it. in a normal market, you, know, you allow for about 36% drop. So this is within the parameters, starting to round out the, from the bottom. So this is another one you can take a look at, industrial sector. Pull back, Kellogg. So this was a spinoff from the Kellogg ticker K, now they've got like three three tickers. And this is Insta, Instacart. So this one IPO'd and a lot of hoopla came out at the same time as uh, it was DoorDash or something. Promptly sold off, found a floor, and it's pretty much recovered all the losses to the upside here. So we just want to wait for a, you could add this to your short list because you want to wait for some kind of setup on this. And ARM was the, so everybody kind of knew about ARM. It was surprising that this one actually, when it came out, had a big sell off. It didn't last too long, quickly, promptly turned around. And this is the stock that, or the company that NVIDIA tried to buy, but they weren't allowed to because of uh, monopoly concerns from the Europeans. And then, and then NVIDIA had to abandon um, its bid. But then all of a sudden, on earnings, this thing just went crazy. 70 to 160. I mean, that's more than 100%, 100 move right there. So it's interesting. You can think of this as... Uh, Look at it in terms of a high type flag now, because yeah, those are the absolute strongest chart pans out there. And so this is definitely within 
the uh, the realm of high type right so you want to add arm to your list so that's so so far there's three to four and then we have uh, few more to take a look at that's it okay so we identified you know four out of that batch so hopefully um you will um take a look at those in your own time and and study them at your leisure so that's ipos let's have a take look now let's have a look at um So let's have a look at momentum stocks from a, the lens of uh, s the smaller caps, because ultimately this is your most fertile uh, fishing ground, right? Fishing pond. And if you read uh, O'Neill's first book, the, which is the white cover, the first book on uh, how to make money in stocks, that one is the truest uh, to form because it was the first edition. It had a few errors in it, so the, even the red red cover one is pretty good because that eliminated some of the typos and stuff like that. But between the two of them, nothing much changed. So if you want to kind of stick to the knitting of Canslim, I recommend you find one of those two on Amazon and read it. The later versions kind of got diluted with some other stuff, right? But if you want to follow core strategy and, and stay true to form to what O'Neill was trying to teach, I recommend they stick with those two uh, and one of the things you'll find in there is that uh, his target is smaller caps uh, which have low float and they're early on in their cycles that's why ipos are important and then you want to catch them uh, at uh, 52 week highs so the methodology works if you are selecting the right uh, candidate or stock so let's civil look at the, kind of the smaller caps and let's see what's going on. So ANF was had a tremendous run, kind of forming a flat base. So this one, you can take a look at LPG. This one's been a runner. It's in a base at the moment, coming up the right-hand side. So definitely you can watch this one. Dave and Busters, that's had a little bit of a breakout out of a, a flattish base. Wing stop. So this is ironically, and if you look, if you study this, this one has arguably um, from its lows. From if you look at the lows from September to see the peak here, that's up 146, and to the close today, it's about 133. But I mean, you know, this is not a a new business. This is not anything euphoric or innovative or digital or AI. But this has been one of the strongest stocks in the in the uh, the market over the past year. Surprisingly, Alpine TX. This is in a pullback. Appfolio is following through from a breakout. And this is just a nice follow through from his prior breakouts. Right there, uh, actually going back further. So this was the breakout. <clears throat> if you'd caught this, then you'd be in tall clover. So from that break out, we are up about 55%. PGGX. So this is in a nice little uh, basing pattern, fairly tight. So everything looks good on this. Boise, just med pay. So this one's been a subject of multiple uh, selections. So we can see 
kind of a base around here. Mini base here. And just from that last move, it's up uh, 20%. So there's a 20% move right there. Probably another 20%. That's 11% move there. But it's been a pretty uh, <coughs> strong performer. So band is actually turning around. <coughs> this is where you want to look at a story like this. You're looking for like a 52 week high. And that is exactly 52 weeks from that breakout right there. So that would have put this on your radar. Have a quote, Sonos, Shockwave. This one's a bit volatile. Stock, the Dex. So some of these apparel stores like Abercrombie and American Eagles, so for some reason they've run. Dick Sporting Good continues to power up. So this is another one that's been off multiple uh, selections in the past. You can see all the, a lot of bases along the way. Base here, base there, base here, base here. So this one was an excellent stock to have accumulated through that uprun. And now it's trying to get a little climactic. Still early on, but it's trying to show a little frothiness. Auto innovation. BK. Sandings. <coughs> Wellington. Builder, builder's another strong performer. So it's had a, from a canceling perspective, it hasn't been that easy to manage. And that last base worked out quite nicely. So let's break out from here. It's already about 30%. Then if we go to back here, you've got this long breakout, long base here. You've got a breakout here. And from here, you got another almost 50, yeah, 50% 50 move up there. So there's been ample opportunity in his SMCI, uh, which is being bought and sold umpteen times. So we had a nice little basing pattern through here. This your breakout, last breakout was there. And from there, stock bumped up 191%. This is an absolute crazy move. 300 bucks and up to 1200, basically. AZZ, <laughs> this is another strong move up. So we're seeing a lot of these stocks are actually now exhibiting extreme climbs, which is telling us something about the market. Deckers is another one. So we have a big deep base through here. Finally gets to the side, we'll break out. You get another little base in here. You get a breakout there. And from there, it's a moonshot, 82%. And th these percentages are... So the, the, these type of returns that you're getting on these stocks is partly because, one, obviously the market is strong. So that that being said, it's two because they're, they're smaller stocks, they're smaller caps. <clears throat> they don't have as many shares, so there's a lot more competition for um, the float. So if you have, if you bag a few of these, that make 50, 60, 70, 80% within this you know, short time frame. 
like this one. And that moves only it was under five months. So where can where else can you get like seventy percent in under five months? So this is an area if you really want to make big money, this is an area you want to focus. This is another one that's, I mean, this is in the industrial sector, but the stocks had quite the move already. 82%. And even from this last uh, breakout, we are up almost 50%, 48%. So these started to, so this was the breakout right there so that was the breakout you wanted to get into obviously you had a little chop city until it reconfirmed the next the breakout again here and then from there you moved up found support and then it took off from there so depending on how you set your rules up obviously you could be um thrown out of a stock then you'd have to get back in um, and it all depends on where you set your stops as well. So a number of factors come into what you will finally make in a stock. And back to Abercrombie and Fitch. All right, so that's... Uh, uh, so we covered IPOs, and we've covered good, strong momentum stocks. Let's go back to... Um, so we didn't have any of these um, breakouts. Some of these have already been covered in the review. Um, best performing stocks. We could maybe look at some of these next. And we looked at momentum stocks. And then we'll take a look at the market as well. Okay, so some of the stocks that have broken out <clears throat> since we last met. So in the last meeting, we, we went through the January ones. Um, so let's go through Feb. Stocks that did something in February. So the first of all is Fix. So we're probably looking at around here. So there's the breakout and fix early Feb. And from there, if you have this, you're up 48% from that breakout. And there's been no drama along the way, right? It's pretty much been a, an up move. We've had a couple down weeks now. We've got um two down one up so you have to be careful of uh one of the cell signals at this level to see if, if it is it's going to be a cell on fix next up we have uh, net which i think is cloud fair this is also a February move. So this one didn't follow through. So it kind of broke out. Tried to move up, but hasn't been able to follow. Now, sometimes uh, in the next uh, two to six weeks, which is what this is exhibiting, stock will come back in like this one has come. So you want to watch this and see if it sets up. Um, and if it sets up from a consolidation after a follow through like this, they're pretty strong moves because all the weak hands are shaken out and the money and the shares transfer to the strong hands. So this one still can give, a, give an opportunity for an entry. 
Moving on. Let's look at another one. The tray desk. Okay, this was another February breakout around here. So this, I believe, was earnings related. So we can see that the stock was kind of moving down. It was in a downtrend. That downtrend then changes the, with an earnings beat. Um, and just like the last stock that we saw, uh, this one also, which is glad for this one also broke out on an earnings release and then it's pulled back in and it's been consolidating. And you can see this one's starting to make that move up. You know, you're going to have to be careful with whether what the market tension is, but uh, potentially this is uh, giving you a setup for a breakout. Let's uh, look at one more. The last one in February that we noted in the best performing stock picks is power. Um, <clears throat> so these are included usually, I, they're included in, in the videos that I post on the YouTube channel. If you want to follow these. So this one broke out around here. And it's just followed through nicely. So we've, you know, so that's actually kind of good, right? Because we've now we've seen some like power breaking out and following through a couple of them and like fixing power and a couple that broke out um, on earnings and then have pulled back in, giving you a, a second shot and getting into them. So there's two out of these four uh, that are definitely worth taking a look at because the setup is setting up for them. All right, so that is the um, the breakouts. Let's go back to our agenda. Okay, so we covered that. Not none of these. Covered the breakouts. Covered the break best performing stocks. We just covered. Uh, and then we covered momentum stocks earlier. Next up is the market. All right, so today was a interesting day for sure. Let's have a look. Let's move this to a daily chart. Start with the SPY first, SPYDA, SPX. So we can see straight off the bat today, today's action it was extremely bad. And don't think the, the volume hasn't, maybe hasn't come in yet. The volume of an IZ usually comes in later in the evening. Once they figured out what are the, the, the various pools and aggregations of data, but from price bar alone, we can see that we ha we actually had, a, from yesterday's closed, we gapped up. So that was a strong move. Moved up a little bit. And then there was just this crushing uh, down move. And that's taken that moving average out completely. So short-term support. Just knocked down. So it's that like that around <clears throat> that twenty day mark, um, or twenty day moving average mark. So this was not good. So the next stop will be kind of get to the the next level of support down here, fifty, fifty moving average. That's what we have to watch for, and the nature of uh, the next few days. Because you want to watch the action for three or four days, right? We'll see. So this is obviously going to add distribution day um, across the board. And we haven't seen those. And if you watch the market video or the weekly wrap video from last week, um, there's a market segment in there on the uh, markets. And that, for the last two sessions, I've been pointing out that the markets have been flattening out. So it's starting to show weakness in the up move getting tired so it was getting ready for a a pause of some sort but a move like today's which is pretty drastic is not healthy 
So this pullback may become something more serious given the uh, size of the bar and whatever volume comes in. We'll have to look for that. So that's the S&P. If we look at the Dow Jones index, So again, we can see the Dow Jones had already come off a little bit from his highs over here. And by this one also equally kind of going to get a little gap up, gets above those curling down averages, and then just gives up the ghost for the day. This one slices a, an even more key moving average, which is the 50-day. Uh, on volume. So this does not bode well. So we've got two for two out. And then if we look at the broader um, NASDAQ first. So on the broader NASDAQ, we can see same move. So all the indexes kind of gapped up from the day before. And this one sliced through that moving average quite comfortably. So, and this one's now <clears throat> sitting close to the the 50 day. So again, we'll have to see what the market has in store for the next three, five days to see what action we've got. And since we're, we'll might as well look at the uh, NASDAQ 100 because that's a little bit more sensitive than the broader one. Same picture. And we can see that this is a little bit weaker than the broader NASDAQ because it's much closer to now getting support on a 50 day but given the consistency between all of these and let's have a look at the uh, small caps we'll have to look at the etf for that and so this had come off the peaks same story i'm gonna gap up we'll move up sell off although this one bounced a little bit higher into the close still a distribution day whichever way you look at it so across the indexes <clears throat> not good so let's have a look at the vix let's see if this is starting to perk up and indeed so we can see quite quite a move today and we can see that the average is now um the value is at 16 so it's come off the lows and go down to the 12s and now it's at the 16. So down at the 12s, it's just like, so no volatility, very calm. So now it's getting into the range where, you know, this, it's kind of shouting volatility. You'd have to get above 20. Um, and then that'll start to confirm a more, much more of a serious pullback. So early days yet. Now we have to watch what the market does. All right, so. Can we get? Let me uh, let's have a look at one more set of data. So let's look at the Mag Seven. Um, start with Meta. So we can see Meta after this earnings jump has been following through pretty nicely, but we get to about here. And you see Meta's been trading sideways. So this has not been propping up the market. It hasn't been selling off either, but, uh, and then in here we can see there's a lot more down days than there are up days. So a little weakness showing up here. Microsoft kind of came out of this little base here, popped his head up there not for long though we'll bounce back and then it's a high from that high it's been working its way down gentle pullback a little bit more violent today so this one just finished in, finishing at the uh, 20 day key moving average Good to... amazon so Amazon had a nice beat back here, moved up quite nicely. Actually here, 
a little high ground up here and then sold off. Not quite down to its uh, moving average. So this one still may have some strength left in, some lag, lag effect. Let's look at an apple. Okay, so now the story changes because we've got kind of a little bit of a top here. And then you can argue it failed to get back above that. So now we've got a little bit of a double top showing. You've also got a downtrend channel in play going on. And it's testing. Well, it did undercut. It's undercut that prior low down here already. And now it's reacting from the from below against that 20 day moving average. So the picture on Apple doesn't look uh, appealing at all at this stage. So this one is uh, not doing well. Look at video. So obviously this is the stock of the day. So huge move up, kind of peaked over here, came back in, tried to take that peak out, couldn't quite do it. So early to call this yet, but potentially if the market does roll over, then we can look back in this and say, hey, you know, that was a little double talk going on there. And then from there, we can see it's been sliding into a pullback. It's already cut the 20 day, which is never a good sign. So we have to see if it gets down to the 800 mark, which is where to watch. Um, if it does, it between 850 and 800, um, assuming the market holds, would actually be a good little entry point for, or an add-on point into NVIDIA. Um, and then we have Tesla, right? So Tesla has been in a downtrend for a while now. It had that massive run-up last year, peaked, and then it's just been selling off. So it's in, in a pretty established down move. And we can see it's, it's, it's mostly contained by that 50-day uh, moving average, which is acting as uh, points of resistance. So for those of you who are more advanced, you can uh, consider that as a an area where you can think about taking a short position on Tesla. Okay, so that is the markets. Plus, we've looked at the, the MAG-7. So that's the agenda. And for those of you who are new or haven't been in for a while, you can go to the YouTube channel, uh, type in Sensor360 Investor, and you can get um, look at past recordings in the podcast playlist of these meetings. Um, if you want to reach out, you can do on the email here. And if you want to participate in the crowdsourcing activity and get uh, stocks like <clears throat> from Momentum Stocks, so, so if you don't have access to a, a service plan or something like that, you can get um, a good list of stocks for free from the uh, community website. So that's it. Um, that's the program. Let me see if there's anything in the uh, chat. Uptrend under pressure now. So I would not be surprised because we we were with a high distribution count um, and we've cut that 20 day moving average in, in some style. And, um, So we'll look for CBD saying. <clears throat> so I assume, Chris, uh, Charlie, you're, uh, you looked it up already. Just going to check. Yep, under pressure. So under pressure, for those of you not familiar with, with the, the uh, IBD vernacular, 
that just means that the uh, there's enough selling going on in the market over a, a specified period, which is typically 25 days, that uh, you know you should now be focused on managing your positions, tightening your stops, and you know not necessarily going to cash, but you know making just kind of watching your exposure, maybe even reducing it a little bit, and then. Um, not be too tempted to wade back into new positions um, or new breakouts until you've got a better market ahead of you. So it's it's a good little um, guideline, but it, it that's what it is. It's a guideline. It's not a hard and fast rule. And ultimately, yeah, you know, you're the master of your portfolio and your decision making. So and you should follow your rules. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Uh, Charlie. Okay, any other questions before we close? Um, and I'll say this will this has been recorded, so it'll go up on the YouTube. So if you want to go back and grab some of those tickets that we looked at, the ones I pointed out for your review, uh, you can you'll be able to do that. It'll be posted later tonight. Okay, so I'll give us 30 seconds to see if there's anything coming in the chat box other than that. after that, if there's nothing, then we'll move to close. Uh, <clears throat> if there's any feedback, uh, feel free to stick that in the chat. Or send me an email. Okay, sounds like everyone's good. Thanks for coming by, stopping by, and we'll do this again in a month. Thanks, everyone. Good night.